And close your eyes. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. And see if you can stay right there. Make it a game. Don't be too grim about the meditation. That was John Swartz's comment when he taught a meditation retreat. A group of Westerners back in Massachusetts, after the second or third day, he turned to me and said, Have you noticed how grim everybody is? In other words, me meditation is something you do with a serious purpose, but you're not grim about it. And John Fuang used to say a lot that it's something you play with. You get to play with the breath. And as with any game, if you get knocked over, that's not the end of the game. You just get back up. Things don't go well, okay, you start all over again. If you have this attitude of enjoying what you're doing, it makes it a lot easier. And there's a lot to play with. You play with the breath, you play with where you're focused, how strong your focus is. After all, I get a sense of when the focus is too strong, when it's not strong enough. And how do you know? By playing around. Now, this is not playing around in a desultory way. You really are serious. It's like someone playing a game of basketball who wants to win, wants to do it really well. But there is the element of play. There's things that are going to come up in the course of the meditation that you may not expect. We'll learn how to take those in stride and see if you can use them to your advantage. Because after all, the meditation is an exploration. We're not trying to clone somebody else's awakening. And we're not trying to squeeze the mind into an enlightened straitjacket. When the Buddha gives meditation instructions, he's basically saying there's something of real value here in your mind. What he calls consciousness without surface. Consciousness of this doesn't have anything to do with space and time. It's there. But to find it, you have to look around. And he gives you the tools for looking. He teaches the three characteristics. He's not asking you to sign on to the idea that everything is impermanent and suffering and not self. He's saying, look at things to see where they are in constant, where they're stressful, where they're not self. So you realize that that's not what you're looking for. And it's for things that don't pass the test. On the one hand, some of them are part of the path and others are not. If anything is unskillful, you use these tools to let them go. To get yourself firmer and firmer in the path. Once you're firmly on the path, again, you can start analyzing the path itself and strip away the things that are unnecessary until you finally get to the real gold out there. So it's an exploration we're doing here. These are tools you use to explore and tools you use in order to master them. How do you master them? You play with them. Make concentration a game. And you find that with time you come out winning. <laughs>